Welcome to this video applying variables and keywords. In this video we're going to see what are variables, their data types, some information about keywords and then we're going to be testing all the information you learned. Variables are a critical element of programming and computers in general. Variables are actually used to store data or point to data. So later on you can use this to manipulate, move, store permanently or temporarily and so on. So in general the computer's memory is divided into bits and bytes. Let's say that this building is much like a computer's memory and each of these boxes signify one byte. Now one byte equal to eight bits. So for example if you want to store a variable of type byte then you would be taking one of these boxes and you would store information pertaining to the data type byte. Now if you want to store an integer like numbers then you need two bytes which is 16 bits so you're going to be taking two boxes in the memory and same goes for long long you would need four bytes in other words 32 bits okay let's take a look at all the data types so these are all the data types which are available for you in the Arduino language so for example you can start with the boolean so this is one byte or 8 bits. With boolean you can only store 0 or 1 which is true or false. Then you have character. Character you can store any value which is signed so minus or plus from minus 128 to 127. You can also store any ASCII character. Now what is an ASCII character? ASCII characters are nothing but character mapped to a decimal and ultimately a binary value. So this is a standard created by the ASCII association. Okay, for example, let's say that you want to store A. Now in decimal, A is 97. And this is finally converted to binary and this is how you can actually store information in the computer's memory which is zeros and ones. So 97 has to be converted to binary. And in 97 in binary is 0110, 0001. So that's what means by ASCII characters. So you have other data types, unsigned car and then the most popular integer short. So integer is two bytes and you can store any value between minus 32,768 to 32,767. If you want unsigned, then you can go from 0 to 65,535. For that you have to use the keyword unsigned int. So you have long if you want to store a value bigger than that then you have to go for long. You can also use float which you will use when you want to store a decimal value. For example 3.4028 is a decimal value and this is a scale of that decimal value. So these are all the data types which you will most likely be using in the Arduino language. Now this is the complete chart of your ASCII characters. So for example when we wanted to see A, A is right about here and the value in decimal is 97. So for example B is 98, C is 99 and so on. If you want capital A, that's going to be 65. If you want 0, that's going to be 48. There you go. Now you know a little bit about the ASCII characters. Alright. Now keywords. What are keywords? Keywords are basically constants, variables and function names already defined as a part of your Arduino language. So for example, low, input, output, private, protected, public, all of these are already taken by the Arduino language. So you should not be using these as your variable names, function names and so on. Alright, so much for the theory. Let's go and try a few examples. So go ahead and fire your Arduino IDE, which I've already done. Connect your Arduino Uno to your computer, which also I have already done. And double check your COM and board. So you can do that by going to Tools and making sure that your board is selected to Arduino Uno and your COM is your current COM. So you can also be seen at the bottom right corner. All right, perfect. So this is the basic setup or this is the minimum structure 
which you need to run the code. So here I am doing just two things. One is we are initializing the serial by calling the function serial.begin and we are passing the baud rate as an argument. This is in the setup because this has to be done in the initial stage and this only runs one time. In the void loop you are printing hello world. For that you are using a function called serial.println and then you are giving the argument as the string hello world and then I am delaying by one second so that there is a gap before it actually starts printing. Now let's go ahead and upload this code to the board. Now before uploading it's going to compile and then it's going to upload. So you must also have to save this code before it actually compiles and uploads. So go ahead and click on that and as you can see it's starting to compile. Alright looks good. So let's go ahead and open the serial monitor. So to do that you have to come to the right hand corner over here and you just click on this magnifying glass. That's about it. So you see that you're communicating to the board now and the board is printing hello world and giving a delay of one second. Perfect. Now if for some reason you're not able to see this hello world and if you're seeing some gibberish then make sure your baud rate is selected to 9600 and not something else. Alright. Now let's take a look at this program. In this first what we're doing is we're creating some variables. For example, we're creating an integer variable called a and then we're assigning a value called 2 to this integer. Now it's not necessary to assign the value at the time of creation. You can always create the variables and then you can assign anywhere in the program or in any function within its scope. Perfect. Now let's go ahead. So we have a character b and that's assigned a value c and we have a character C and the value is B. So you can use both notations and that's why I've used it here. Then now you have a float variable called E and assigning the value of pi 3.14. Now let's go ahead and create an integer array. So array is something which holds a bucket of values. Now this array is of type integer and hence all your integer values can come in. So you're gonna have 1, minus 2, 3 and 4. Now keep in mind that in an array the position starts from 0. So for example 1 is in the position 0 and not in the position 1. So in terms of positions you have 0, 1, 2 and 3. You also have a character array called welcome 6. So obviously you can use 6 characters. So for that we are typing hello. Perfect. Now in the void setup you are beginning your serial and the baud rate is 9600. In the void loop, we want to print the information of these variables and their size. Okay, let's get started. The first thing is we're printing the information of the array called array and what is available at the position number 3. We're giving a delay of 1 second. Then we're printing the label. This has nothing to do with variables. We're just printing some information called value of a equal to. Then we are printing the actual information of the variable a. So you can pass it like this serial.println and don't give the double quotes directly give the name of the variable. So in this case a. Then we want to print the size of a in bytes. So we are going to use the same function serial.println. You are going to use another function called size of and in the argument you have to pass your variable's name. In this case a. And I'm then typing the information called bytes. This has nothing to do with variables again. Then you give a delay, then you print the value of B and then the size of B. Then you print the value of E and then the size of E. Let's go ahead and compile this. So I'm going to say upload. It's going to ask me to save it. So I'm going to save it. And it's starting to compile. Ah, great. So it's giving me an error. And it says that B was not declared in this scope. Perfect. So there is going to be a problem. So let's check it. So we are saying value of B. And then let me check the actual variables here. So as you can see here, this is case sensitive and there is no capital B. Alright, so let's go ahead and change this to small b. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and say upload again. So this is a nice example of how you can troubleshoot. Now another error 
here we're going to say serial.println and it has an incomplete statement. So we already have size of. So let's remove this statement. So in order to do that, I can quickly comment it. Another good example. There you go. Let's go ahead and compile it again. All right, there you go. Now it's uploading. As you can see, the board is flashing and it's done. Now let's go ahead and open your serial monitor. So there you go. So the first value is 4. That is what is available in position 3 of your array called array. Printing the value of A. So value of A is 2. So you can see that 4 and then the value of A is 2. And so on and so forth. Great. I hope you got started with variables. Thank you. In the next video, we're going to see testing control structures.